eventually I'll come up with a better intro than this, but it is not this day. But enough about me. Let's talk about Arwen's coach. So this is part two of making Arwen's coat and the most important part because it's making the visible part of Arwen's coat. And if you are doing the same process, don't start with the visible part. I have made this mistake and I will forever regret it because I have a very beautiful coat that I love. But unfortunately, now I have to make the underclothing, which has to fit under the coat, which I could not give enough ease for. So that's going to be a challenge. But anyway, so this is the finished product. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I made this coat. Um, I'm going to do my best to explain everything or give you a tutorial, as in somebody else's tutorial, on how to do some things. Um, I really just want to step you guys through the process of how I made my coat, and hopefully you can use some of these methods as your own. Some of them you might want to change, or you might not want to follow the same steps as I did. Now first and foremost, this coat was made completely from scratch. I did not have a pattern and I did not have any pre-made pieces. The only thing that I used was tutorials from like YouTube or Google or things like that. But I'm really getting ahead of myself. So first of all, let's talk about the fabric that I used. Okay, so this main fabric that you see all over the coat is just a faux suede in, I believe it's called Vintage Copen something or other. Um, I don't want to give you guys the link to this particular fabric because I think I might have gotten my card stolen from the people who sold me this fabric and I don't want the same thing to happen to you guys. Um, but I also don't want to give you the, their name because I'm not actually sure that it was them that had that had me losing my cards information. And then at the back here, we have the same fabric that I used on Arwen's dream dress. I actually took the scraps of that fabric, which I can't remember what it's called right now, so I'll have to look it up and um, post it in the comments. Not comments. The summary, whatever that's called. Um, but I will put that in the summary or I'll put it somewhere on the screen. Uh, as you know, the dream dress is a light purpley color, so I did wind up dyeing this, uh, this fabric and sewing it into the back here, or here. Um, the one thing about that is there is fraying, you cannot see it. There is a bit of fraying because I didn't want to put a seam in it. Um, and then also there are a couple of places where there's some staining because I just used Rit dye. And um, it's, I would have liked to just make, um, to get the right color fabric in the first place. And then I have this ribbon, which I got from Joann's. It's just a normal, everyday ribbon. It does not have any wire in it. That's important. Um, it was actually the same color as the dream dress, so I wound up dyeing this ribbon and the ribbon in the back at the same time. Unsurprisingly, they did come out as different colors, but they both matched the coat as I wanted it to. Now, I didn't mention before, my coat is blue tinted. This is because in the behind the scenes, the coat did seem to be blue, or maybe it was in the museum. The coat did seem to have a little bit of a blue tint. Now I'm kind of thinking that that might have actually been the lighting of the pictures that were taken, and I think it might have been more gray. So in the future, when I remake this dress, because I'm totally going to remake this dress, I'm going to make it a bit more gray. Um, so the coat collar, which you're only supposed to see about probably that much, but again, 
doesn't quite fit my mannequin. Um, has this kind of crinkly texture. I could not find anything that quite fit the crinkly texture. I am so sorry that I'm moving way too much. It's really hard to do this. Anyway, so um, what I wound up doing is I wound up getting this kind of mesh material, which I do have a scrap of this so you can see it. So this kind of mesh material, and I it was only white or black, and I did not want white or black, so I wound up buying this material from Amazon, which I'll put the link in the description below, and I dyed it again. Whee! Ow! <laughs> it's like slowly melting into it. Alright, so this is a great time to actually talk about how we dyed the fabric. And my only suggestion is play with it. I literally got three different colors of RIT dye, blue, green, and purple, poured them into boiling water, and put the fabric in. Like, I didn't even pick how much I wanted to put in, I just did it. The last fabric that we have is the underskirt, which is this one right here. I honestly have no idea what kind of fabric this is. I don't remember what I bought. And the way I normally work with fabrics, if I don't absolutely know what kind of fabric it should be, such as the faux suede that is on the coat, is I generally go to Joann's and play with fabrics until I go, this one looks like it's the right kind of material. It's not the way I would suggest doing it, but that is how I do it. So in the future, I'll try to keep better track of the types of fabric that I use so that I can tell you, but really it's just a flowy, shiny material that again was in white. So again, I did have to dye it. And again, I did get a couple of stains on the fabric, spots and things, which you honestly can't see from far away, but it's one of those things that in my brain, I'm like, how dare? Anyway, and then the threads that I used, I just used a blue coat thread from Joann's. Um, that's what I used for all of the uh, seams and things. And then I use this cording, which I don't remember where I bought it. Hopefully I'll be able to find it and put it in the description. I believe this one was also white. So I did wind up having to stain to dye this. All of this was done with RIT dye and I'll get more into it later on during the making of process. And then this thread for the embroidery was just... I believe it was silk thread. And I think that's all the materials. Of course, we have some needles and thread and stuff like that, but none of that is visible on the um, coat. Now, one thing I do have to say, I originally did not want to have to do this, but it looks like I'm probably going to have to. Um, the coat does not fit my mannequin because when I was making this coat, I did it with a corset on, which I will have to make a corset that goes underneath it. <clears throat> so my mannequin is actually to my shape right now and not with a corset on, but the bust is actually my size. So you can see it's not closing at the bust. Um, so I'm probably going to have to put some sort of dress closure right at the bust line so it can close a little bit higher and it won't have this much of an opening. And just a reminder, this coat does not have the undersleeve. I did not put the undersleeve in because I made an undershirt. However, it is super simple to put an undersleeve in. You just gotta sew it in right at the, um, at this seam line right here and it'll, it'll look fine. That's actually how they did it in the movies. But again, I didn't want to have a movie costume. I wanted to have an outfit. I'm going to stop calling it a 
historically accurate because like more and more as I go through and figure out how I'm going to do different pieces, it's getting less and less historically accurate. So honestly, at this point, I don't even think I can call it that. So we're just going to say we're trying to make an outfit rather than a costume. Not that I will ever wear this for anything other than costume purposes, but that is, there, that is neither here nor there. Okay, I really need to keep an eye on the camera. I love, I love my coat so much that I like can't keep an eye on the camera. Anyway, anyway. Okay, so first thing we're gonna talk about is the drafting of the pattern. Now, I used a tutorial to make my own bodice piece um, with princess seams. I have tried to repeat the process in order to be able to show it to you and for the life of me, for some reason, I just can't get it to work. Everything I do is misshapen or way too big and I just blows my mind how I got it to work this once and I can never get it to work again. But, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a tutorial of a tutorial, either the one that I used or a similar one, because again, this was a while ago. I'm not sure I'll be able to find the one that I used, but a similar tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and give that to you and um, it'll be at the bottom of the screen and then it'll also be in the info section. Oh, excuse me. And pretty much any pattern that you're ever going to find, the bust line measurement is made for either a B or a C cup. Pretty much verging on the B cup. And I'm not a B cup. And if you're not a B cup, this is going to be a problem for you. Because you're going to make, and you might not make this mistake, but I made this mistake. I made the pattern at first based on my actual bust line and it was massive because it's made for a B cup and I'm not a B cup. Now the way you get around that is you do an under bust, you go above your bust line, you take that measurement. That would be your pattern drafting measurement. Now when I say B cup, just so everybody's aware, that is an American size B cup. I don't know what that would be anywhere else. So if you can figure that So what you do is you take an underbust, you take an overbust measurement, you do all your drafting based on based on the overbust, then you do some alterations to it after you've made the pattern to add in your bust line. That I am actually going to be able to show you, so let's go do that right now. Alright, so now that you've gone and followed the tutorial on how to make the bodice block with a princess seam, you should have something that looks something like this. Now I just sketched this real fast based on pictures that are on the internet, so this isn't going to look exactly like it should. Um, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something like this, and I think I can get you um, generally where you need to be based on this um, look. So first of all, let me go ahead and get out of the way a couple of um, things that we need to know. So this line right here, that is the center front. And actually, my handwriting is really bad, so I'm just going to, from now on, I'm probably just going to put a symbol. Um, and then I'll put what it means on the uh, screen. Okay, so anyway, so this is the center front. The one right next to it, can you see this? I can't tell if you can see this. Anyway, so 
this line right here is the center. My pen stopped working. I'll be right back. Ugh. Is the center back. That is so much better. So this is the entire back portion, which honestly we don't really care about at the moment, but we do want to say that this is our waistline. Now what we really want to focus on is we want to focus on the front. That's where all of the interest is and all of that. So, so in the front we have the bust line and the waistline. I didn't bother to mark out the, the bust line on the back portion just because I don't really think it's, um, I don't think it's necessary, it doesn't affect anything. First and foremost, we need to correct for the bust line. This is where the bust line is, but if you're a bigger busted person like I am, you use the under bust measurements to do it. So what you need to do is you need to add on a certain amount. Now I'm not really sure how much I added on because I haven't taken my measurements in a little bit, but let's just say we're gonna add on this much to both sides. Whatever you need to add on, split it in half and put it on both sides. If you don't, your center, the center of your princess scene isn't gonna land where it needs to go. And then from there, what you can do is just simply follow it to the top and then down to the waistline. You don't want to go all the way down to the hip line or anything like that for two reasons. One of them being the coat doesn't actually go down to the hip line. The other one being you still need to take it in at the waistline to the waistline measurement. You're changing your bust measurement, but no other measurement. So we've done one side, now we also want to do the other side. And I like to put a bit of a curve to that one. Now I'm pretty sure this is not how you're supposed to do this. I think there's like a whole method on opening up the, sorry about the puzzle on my, my table. I recently got a Lord of the Rings puzzle and I'm trying to do it and it's really hard. Anyway, I'm pretty sure this isn't how you're supposed to do um, the excess on the bus measurement. I think there are other methods of doing it. Um, that uh, that open up the bus line and make it so it would fit you much better. This is how I did it and it worked for me, but if you want to look up some other ways to do that, it's probably a good idea. So now we have our bust measurement. And actually, So now let's alter the collar. I'm gonna see if I can't get a different colored pen. All right, let me just trace this over just so you can see what I'm talking about. So now I want to talk about the collar. This collar that you see here is just a round collar. Um, I don't even really know how far down it goes, but I think it's about a t-shirt kind of proportion to a collar. The collar that we want for Arwen's coat is going to be a v-neck because then we can add on the collar. So 
figure out where exactly you want your v-neck to end. I think I had mine end about at, um, about at the bust line. So I'm just gonna use the bust line as an example. But end it wherever you want it to be ended. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna draw the v-neck. That's a bit squiggly. It's interesting using a highlighter to do this. Anyway. So that means that this portion here, you're not gonna use. And then also the other thing we need to take into account is the bottom of the coat. So Arwen's coat looks like it ends about at the waist. However, it does dip down in the front into another V. So what I did is I went ahead and I used my waistline from the back, pretty much following the waistline on the side. And then at the front, I did a kind of curl front. This allows it to have that kind of dip in the front, uh, but it doesn't really affect your pattern too much. So the only thing it does is it gets rid of your hip, which is fine, that's, a, that's what we want. Okay, so now let me go ahead and we're just gonna trace out the, I really should have the camera on my other side because then you could actually see what I'm doing, but hopefully you're, you've got a good idea of it just based on the colors. Unfortunately, I didn't have room to put it on the other side. So anyway, so this is the basic front bodice portion of Arwen's coat. Now, the way that I did the bust line, again, it's not uh, really how people would do the bust line if you were actually a sewer and knew what you were doing. I highly suggest you use um, muslin or something and you make a draft pattern. Draft pattern? I feel like that's not the correct word. If I'm saying the wrong word, I'll correct it later. Anyway, so I highly suggest you make one of those just to make sure it fits. I made one, I was really happy with it, but one thing to be aware of is I used muslin for that and it turns out that my, um, oh gosh, it turns out that my faux suede is a thicker fabric, which obviously it is, but I didn't think about it at the time. And because of that, my coat is a little bit tight around the arms and stuff like that. It's not horrible, but it just means I don't have quite as much ease as I had hoped I would have with the coat. So make sure you take into account your fabric when you're doing ease. But back to this. Now we have the front bodice pattern. The only thing we're missing is the collar. Arwen has this kind of curled up collar that sticks out and it looks really pretty and there are no seams connecting it to the front of the jacket. That's because what she has is what I believe is called a rolled collar. So the collar is attached to this front bodice pattern and then it is sewn onto the back. Um, and again, this is another thing that kind of the geometry of it blows my mind. So I wound up doing it 50 million times before I got it to sit correctly. I'll go ahead and link a tutorial, of course, um, and I'll show you kind of what I did. But honestly, I taped several different versions of this onto my pattern, put it against my body and was like, that looks good finally. So, um, the geometry of it is crazy and I have no idea. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of, if I remember correctly, so you're gonna 
do this kind of, it sticks out slightly. And then in the front. And then you gotta bring it back. You wanna follow the collar, so I think I made mine three inches tall, I believe. Something like that. This is again, this is based on kind of your neck length. So I put it against my neck and was like, that doesn't look like it'll bother my chin or anything like that. So you're gonna stick it out a little bit and then follow it so you're always having the same height. Now this might not look like it's gonna sit right because it's sticking out and this was my brain was like, it shouldn't stick out, it should be straight up and down. However, what you need to take into account is that it is going over your bust. So this scene, this scene here is actually at a crooked angle. It is going to be pulling the collar backwards. So you have to push the collar forward in order to take into account that backward movement towards your shoulder. Again, the geometry of it just blows my mind. So you get to the point where you're at the shoulder and now you need to put in a little bit of excess for the collar so that you can make it so that it'll attach back here on the back bodice. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of do that sort of thing. That might be a bit of a too much of a curl, I think, because I'm running out of room on my paper. I wasn't expecting to run out of room. But you're gonna do kind of a back curl. The length of the back collar, mine is not long enough because again, it is, I'm running out of room. So you want it to have a bit of a curve on its own. That looks really bad. Honestly, look at the tutorial. They will describe it a little bit better. Although the problem with theirs is they also call it a, sh I think it's a shawl collar. So it's very much, um, it's the type of uh, like loose turtlenecky collar that just kind of bundles up around the neck. So they don't give a good example of this kind of collar. So really the back portion, follow their tutorial. For the front portion, do you're gonna need to do something like this, but again, you're gonna wanna test it on your own, put it against your body. Even the pattern I used, I wound up using newspaper as my pattern paper at the time and I taped newspaper on, didn't like it, cut it off, taped it on, didn't like it, cut it off, taped it on. And then I would always between each one put it against my body and see how that collar is gonna fall. So is it gonna pull backwards? Is it gonna fall forwards? Is it gonna be too tall? Things like that. Now as for the back, really quickly, uh, the back is very easy, just following the tutorial for the princess seam. Except we're going to end at the waist. Honestly, I can't remember if the tutorial that I gave you ends at the waist or if it ends at the hip. But either way, what we need is to the waist. We don't need anything past the waist. Um... So we're just going to go ahead and say that is our part. Now other things that you need to be aware about, because I forgot about them and then when I was sewing it gave me problems. So the center back is done on the fold. Okay, what you need to be aware of is here and let's see. There. So in the back portion, this is gonna be where you're gonna put the back ribbon. You wanna make sure that you're aware that it goes there so that you know that when you get to that point, you take that ribbon and you put it in the seam because I did not put it in the seam 
and um, I wound up having to take that seam apart multiple times, which when you're hand sewing a faux suede fabric is not fun. For the front portion, you don't want to put the ribbon into the um, seam like you did with the back portion because this is going to be your closure, or at least it was my closure. The only way that I close that coat is through the front ribbon. So instead what you're going to do is you're going to make loops that you can put that you can put your ribbon through. This is really easy. You just need a little bit of like um, a little bit of cording, not the same cording as you're going to use on the baseball stitch, but a little bit of cording that the ribbon will s slide easily through. But you got to make sure that you are aware that it is there so that you can put it in when you're sewing the seam. You don't have to undo the seam to put it in like I did. <laughs> so now that we have this, what we need is a skirt. So what I do for the skirt is, let me see if you can still see that. Yeah, okay. So what I do for the skirt, it's very simple. Um, skirts I find in general are pretty simple as long as you don't make them too complicated, which I have done in the past. So it looks like Arwen's coat has four panels in the overskirt that which is done in the vintage suede. So what I did is I made two panels for the front and two panels for the back, one for each side. So I have right front, right back, left front, left back. So what you want to do is follow the line of your... There is a plane behind me. So what you want to do is you want to follow the line that you already have for your front. So I'm just going to show you the front because the back is, again, it's the same process and I don't want to go over it too, off, too much. So what you want to do is you want to follow this front line, not taking into consideration the empty space here. So you want to follow, we have a straight line that then comes down in a curve. Okay, and then we have, it's just a normal panel, so what I wound up doing is this. It did look like her coat came up at a curve. Ooh, this is not looking very good. So it did look like her, um, the front panel comes up slightly at a curve. The back panels are completely triangular like this portion is. Now that I've done that, I have to cut it out. So I have cut out my front skirt panel. So I'm going to go ahead and put front skirt. So this is my front skirt panel. I did not think that I had enough flow or volume on the coat, the front coat. I just, I wanted it to have a little bit more. Now I do slightly regret this. I'm going to show you what I did, but I do slightly regret it because it is causing some puckering. So what I did is I took two lines down at about a third of the coach and my lines are not straight and I apologize but anyway so I took two lines and cut them on the pattern all the way to about the top don't cut all the way to the top I made this mistake before it messes everything up and then you have to redo it so take them both all the way about to the top. So now that you have your pieces cut, oh, this one's not cut up. 
Oh no. So now that you have your pieces cut, you can open them. And make sure you open them about the same on both portion. See, I need a weight. I need something to hold it up. So make sure you have it open about the same amount on both pieces. You don't want to have too much over here and not enough over here. So what this is going to do is now you can just trace this. Now the bottom of the skirt isn't actually all that important. It's really just more of a curved line. What actually matters is the top of the skirt. See if I can do this without losing. So when you open up the top of the skirt, I don't know if you can see it, but it does cause, well, let's go ahead and trace it and I'll show you. So this is my new front skirt panel. And if you hold this one to it, you can see that, close, you can see how much more of, there's like, how much more of a curve this one has than this one does. So when you open up your skirt panel, you're also moving the angle at which the top of the skirt is. That makes it so that you don't have, you can have more volume, but you don't have to have, um, pleats or anything at the top of the coat, which Arwen's coat definitely does not have. Now for the underskirt, it is slightly different, which now that I've done the front skirt panel, I realize I actually do need the back skirt panel. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that real fast. Now I have my front skirt panel and I have my back skirt panel. We're gonna say this is, I'm gonna say the right, I'm probably wrong, but we're gonna say that's the right front skirt panel and the right back skirt panel. So I still have my cuts on it. In the back skirt panel, if you look at the pictures from Arwen riding on her horse, it does look like there is no seams on the side portion of the skirt. So Quick side note, because I just saw this picture and I can't get over it. Is she wearing Uggs here? So it looks like the side portion of the, the skirt is connected. There's no seams. However, there is also no trailing skirt on the back of the horse, which means there's probably not... A connection to the back of the horse. So what I'm going to say is that there are two skirt underskirt panels, the right side and the back side. Now I already had my panels for my overskirt. So what I wound up doing is in the so same way that I opened up the front panels, I went ahead and I opened up my panels. on both pattern pieces. And I kind of consider them as one big panel. So the same amount that I put into my pieces down here, I went ahead and put between the two pieces. <laughs> These things do not want to stay where I want them to. And now one thing to be aware of, I also made this one a little bit more open than I did for the overskirt. Because 
I've just felt like the underskirt was probably more flowy in general. And also in order to do that, that meant that I could make a total circle skirt thing. So let's see if I can get this to do what I want it to. Now one thing you want to be aware of is that the panels do overlap slightly. So you want to add a little bit of excess fabric or pattern to the right, the side seams as well as the back seam. You do not want to add anything to the front seam. There is no overlap in the front seam. Just the side seams and the back seam. Which means that if you're going to use the same way that I'm doing, you also want to take that out of your um, take that out of your pattern when you are redrawing it as an underskirt. So all you gotta do is you kinda gotta overlap them. It's pretty simple. Now the front skirt does not have this little, at least it didn't look like it had this little um, curved front portion. So we wanna go and we wanna make that a straight line. The other thing is the underskirt is longer than the overskirt. So let's say it's one inch longer or something like that. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna trace once again our pattern, but we want it to go past and then go ahead and go past on this one. And then follow, this is where it's really important, follow the seams. And again, remember there is a downward dip. You're gonna lose a lot of it when you do this opening. There is a downward dip and it is important that you keep that in mind. And then we just follow thereabouts, take measurements, say this is an inch, this is an inch from the bottom of the panels, but I'm just not even bothering because it's not that important at the moment, so I'm not actually gonna use this. So now we have our underskirt Now we have our underskirt, let's say right, the right side of our underskirt. And you just need to make two of those so that you can do the, so this is the front and this is the back. Remember, do not do anything on the fold. These are two separate panels. So now if you're a sewer, and you are cringing at all of my suggestions, which is entirely possible. I know that I'm not a sewer and I don't know what I'm doing half the time, kind of make things up as I go along. Please feel free to write in the comments how you would suggest to do things better. I would like to improve myself and any suggestions you give would definitely help me do that. And also I'd like for anybody who is coming in and watching this later that they might be able to look at the comments and see some better methods to do it. Okay, so I had like every intention of doing Arwen's coat, the actual coat, in one part, but it wound up being like an hour long and I'm not gonna subject you to listening to my voice for an hour. So, we're gonna split it in half. So we're gonna end this part here, and then we will come back for the next half. If you'd like to keep watching, like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for me, um, for future projects or YouTube, videos or anything you can give me some good hints on because all of this stuff I'm just starting out on that would be great leave a comment um, and I'll see you guys next time